Hi, I built a custom joystick for Star Citizen, and this is how I made it. About six years ago, I started playing space simulators, and I'm still trying to figure out the best control scheme. I used to fly with a Thrustmaster Warthog, but it never felt quite right, and so I guess the key question is, what would make the perfect controller? I want something that makes it easy to aim in a dogfight, but that also makes me feel like I'm flying a ship through space. That probably means something like a joystick so that you get that feel of flying, but I also need something that makes it easier to land shots in combat. There are six axes that we need to cover. There's roll, pitch, yaw, up, down, left, right, and forwards, backwards. For the most amount of control, we need each of these six axes to be analog. We don't want to use digital inputs like a keyboard. I think that aiming is the hardest thing to get right, and that hardware will probably only take you so far. Aiming is really difficult and precise, and you need it when you're under the most amount of pressure, so I think it's a thing that you need the most amount of practice in. With that in mind, I don't think I'll ever come up with a piece of hardware that makes me better than I already am in terms of aiming with a mouse. Like boom, headshot! Boom, headshot! Boom, headshot! So I'm not going to try to compete with years of muscle memory, and since aiming is basically pitch and yaw, that means I've already got two axes sorted. I now need to figure out how to get four axes into my other hand. I tried a bunch of different sensors. Probably the most interesting one was something called an IMU, which stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. It's basically the array of sensors that you get inside your phone for tracking movement. It worked really well and was really fun to play with, but it has an issue where the errors start accumulating over time and the sensors start drifting. I tried to deal with the error by using optical tracking. The maths and code ended up being really complicated and so I finally gave up on the idea. Going back to the idea that joysticks help you feel like you're flying, I tried to figure out how to get four axes into a single joystick. A big challenge here is getting sensors which are small enough, but also tough enough to stand up to the kind of abuse that a gaming device goes through. Long story short, I think it's easier and cheaper to have two small joysticks, rather than trying to get a really complicated four axes single joystick. For the joysticks, I used uh, something called an M7 gimbal by a company called Tyrannus, Basically, they're the best small sensor that I could find as a joystick. It's getting dark. I started using modeling clay to try and get my hand position as ergonomic as possible. What worked surprisingly well here was that it was easy to find something that was comfortable. The resting position of my left hand means that my thumb lands on one joystick and my index finger lands on the other. I have full range of motion on both joysticks. Even on my first flight, with the two joysticks glued to a piece of cardboard, it became immediately obvious that this was going to work. Each of the joysticks handles two axes. I put roll and throttle under my thumb because I felt that I had the most amount of control here. My index finger controls the lateral thrusters, so up, down, left and right. This works out as being really intuitive, because all you really need to do is point in the direction that you want your ship to go, and the lateral thrusters fire in that direction. Now that I knew where the joysticks needed to be, I fired up the 3D printer. I kept the design pretty simple, because it would be cool to do it in aluminium one day. Whilst that was printing, I moved on to figure out how to handle the buttons. Space sims require a lot of them, and a keyboard does that job really well. I couldn't find a keyboard or a keypad that matched the shape that I wanted, so I ended up having to make my own one. I used some software called KeyCAD to make the design. The most complicated part here was making sure that each key had its own RGB LED. Each one of these can be controlled by software on the Arduino that runs the keyboard. It took about 5 days for the PCBs to be made by a bespoke manufacturer. The board has 32 switches, which is the maximum number for a joystick. It also has a 33rd button, which can be used as a menu or calibration button. This brings us to the most complicated part of the project, which was a weekend of soldering components onto the circuit board. I made a mistake when I chose my components. I used an LED called an SK6812 Mini. They're made from a really cheap plastic, and the design means that they're really difficult to hand solder. 
That said, everything worked and the next bit was printing a case for the keypad. For the switches, I used something called a Xilent V2, which was recommended by the mechanical keyboard community on Reddit. Apart from being a great switch, they're also transparent, which means that the LEDs can shine through them. The 3D printed parts and circuit board lined up perfectly, which meant that I now had switches connected to my LEDs and I could start doing some programming. For switch interactions, the main libraries that I used were Fast LED and Keypad. I used the joysticks as a method for choosing the color for each LED. Once the LED interface was working, I added a calibration mode to be able to handle the noise, dead zones and sensitivity of the joysticks. I think that this is one of the most important features because handling all of this on the hardware side means that you don't need to rely on a game giving an interface to adjust these variables. I also added the ability to be able to invert each axis on the hardware side but forgot to film it, I'll show you that in a bit. The keypad now needed a stand so I went back to the 3D printer. Once it was all assembled, I hopped into a game to make sure that it all worked and ordered some keycaps from a company in the States. This means that the first version of the Shenanigans device is pretty much done. I'll leave you with a final clip of the finished device and a few examples of it being used in game. If you're interested in a version 2, keep an eye on this channel. And otherwise, maybe one day I'll see you in the verse. A joystick is basically a microcontroller that takes a bunch of signals from some uh, 